Now let's look at the p-value method for testing the difference between two proportions. So the main thing you need to know is where to go in your calculator to get the p-value, and it's going to be 2 proportion z test. So 2 prop z test. Okay, so example 2 says in a random sample of 80 Americans, 44 wished that they were rich. In a random sample of 90 Europeans, 41 said the same thing. Alpha is 0.01. Is there a difference in the proportions? Okay, so step one, our hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is always going to be that P1 equals P2. Now the question wants to know if there is a difference in them. So for the alternative, I'll say that P1 does not equal P2, and I will label that one as the claim. And then for step two, you're just going to go to two proportion Z test. Okay, and it's going to ask you um, for some different things here. So x1 is going to be the number of people from the first sample who have the characteristic that they wish they were rich, so that's 44. n1 is the total number of people in the first sample, so that's 80. x2 is the total, or x2 is just the number of people from the second sample who have that characteristic, so 41 out of a total of 90, so n2 is 90, and then make sure you select the not equal to P, P2 part, and then you'll go to calculate, and you should get a p-value of 0 0.2190. And then step three, so steps three and four, we're definitely pros at these steps by now, so since 0 0.2190 is greater than 0 0.01, we do not reject the null hypothesis, which means that there is not enough evidence to support the claim. Okay, so let's do one more. So example 3 says in a random sample of 80 workers from a factory in city A, it was found that 5% were unable to read. Um, in a random sample of 50 workers from city B, 6% were unable to read. Test the claim that there is no difference in the proportion of non-readers in the two cities. Use a level of confidence of 0.1. Okay, so step 1, our null hypothesis is that P1 is equal to P2. And the question wants us to test that there is no difference. So no difference means that they are equal to each other. So I'm going to label that one as the claim. And then that just means that in the alternative, I am going to put um, the not equal to part. Step two, you're going to go to two prop Z test. Now it's going to ask you for x1. So x1 is the number of people from the first sample who were unable to read. Well, right now we don't know what that number is. Okay, We just know that it's 5% of 80. So you can try to do it right there in your calculator, or you can back out of that test and figure out these values separately and then go into the test and type them in. Um, but x1, to get that, you're going to do 5% of 80, so 0 0.05. 0 0.05 times 80 equals 4. And then your n1 is going to be 80. And then we also need to figure out what x2 is. So the number of people from the second city who were unable to read is 6% of 50. So 0 0.06 times 50 comes out to be 3 and then your N2 is going to be 50. Now we got kind of lucky in this one and that's because these um, the percentages of those numbers came out to be whole numbers. Okay, That doesn't always happen but if you get a decimal you, you can't put that into your calculator. It doesn't make any sense to try to say like 4.1 people can't read. So if you do not get a whole number and you're figuring out those, you know, um, amounts, you need to round those to whole numbers before you put them into two prop Z test. If you don't, if you try to do a decimal, um, it'll give you a domain error, and that just means that they need to be whole numbers. So just watch out for that. 
Okay, so I actually, I left this p-value blank. I'm gonna ask you guys in, in a question in a second what that p-value is. So I'll let you figure that out. And let's see, we'll go on to step three. So that p-value, which I'm not gonna tell you what it is, I will just tell you that it is greater than 0.1. So we do not reject the null. So for our conclusion statement, we'll say that there is not enough evidence to reject the claim. Okay, we have one more thing to talk about quickly, and that's confidence intervals for the difference between two proportions. So to do that, you're gonna go to two prop z int. So two proportion z interval. Example four says find the 99% confidence interval for the data from example two. So not the example we just did. Um, let's do it for example two. So we already know what everything is. So we'll just go to two prop z int. I'm just gonna rewrite all the values here. I know you have them written in example two, but just in case so your x1 is 44, n1 is 80, x2 is 41, n2 was 90. Your confidence level is 0.99. Remember, they don't need to specifically tell you that. If it just says find the corresponding confidence interval and alpha was 0.01, then by default, you know the confidence level has to be 0.99. Okay, and then you'll calculate that and you should get uh, negative 0.103 as your lower bound and 0.2915 is your upper bound. And then this is the confidence interval for the difference between the two proportions. So in between, we're gonna say P1 minus P2. Okay, and then just like our, our last couple sections, you're, what you're looking for is whether or not zero falls in that range. So, since zero is in the interval, we do not reject the null hypothesis. And that does agree with the result that we got from example two. Okay, now you may have noticed that on like all the examples we've done, and if you've done the homework, um, we always end up saying that they agree. And that should always be the case, okay? If you get a different result, from your confidence interval than your hypothesis test, then you did something wrong. Up until this section, basically. So with this section, it is possible that you could get a different conclusion um, from your hypothesis test as the confidence interval. I don't think you guys will actually see it in any problem, but if you're out there in the real world doing this and you do come across that, just know that the hypothesis test is more reliable. Okay, but for us, I don't think I've ever seen a question where you ever will say that your results disagree. So just keep that in mind. You should always be agreeing. And if you're not agreeing, you know, that means you did one of the parts wrong. Okay, so that wraps up chapter nine. So great job getting through all of that. Um, I will post something soon with some information about your test as well as a potential study guide and how you can best prepare for your test. So just keep an eye out for that on Canvas.